Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everyone. Uh, as the title implies, I'll be trying to introduce 10 plugins for QGIS in the next 10 minutes. Note that uh, these are just some of the many useful extensions in our favorite open source GIS. I tried to categorize them to the following data access, data manipulation, and data visualization. Just a note for the examples shown, I'll be using the latest release, QGIS 3.16. Our first plugin for the day is called Open Layers plugin. Open Layers is actually a popular web mapping framework. However, this plugin released by SourcePole uh, lets you access different base maps such as OSM, Bing Maps, and Google Maps. To install it, we need first to enable the option for experimental plugins via the uh, plugin setting. Once installed, uh, we can then add a vector layer like the admin boundary from HDX shown here. And the plugin can then be accessed via the web menu. We have a good selection of base maps available, Oops, such as these three. And the first one is uh, from Bing, Bing Aerial, with uh, the labels. Then we have OpenStreetMap in the middle. And on the right side, it's still OpenStreetMap, but flavored by Stamen in a nice watercolor rendering. Second plugin for the day requires installation via a zip file from this site, GeoDose. This is called Tile Plus and it offers additional base maps. Note though that these, uh, or this base map is not just not yet part of the official repo, so do install with caution. As mentioned, it does provide some really nice layers to have, such as those from Esri, CartoDB, and Google. Here we have uh, the latest or a recent infrared data. Under it is the dark base map from CartoDB. Here's a terrain base map from our friends as S3. And this is a beautiful data set from NASA called Night Black Marble. Say you need local geospatial hazard data. Ben Hurd got us covered here. He built a plugin called Open Hazards PH plugin using the dataset maintained by Maning and Arke. It can be downloaded here as a zip file or through the QGIS plugin repo, um, but make sure that the experimental plugins are also enabled. Currently, it has data from Lipad and Project NOAA, ranging from hazard maps, both vector and raster format. As mentioned in the plugin documentation, it may take some time to load depending on the file size and your internet connection. So patience is key here. Here's a vector layer from the NOAA database of a hundred year uh, flood data for the Nagat Islands. We're now on number four. Um, since we already have some interesting layers loaded, we'll tackle a plugin to help us visualize it better. Um, it's called MapSwipe. MapSwipe tool allows you to uh, view two layers simultaneously. So, so it's similar to having two paper maps stacked together. So. You could compare the layers, and here we have a section of Visayas through OSM and as well as NASA black, uh, night black marble. Uh, I believe this tool would also be great to use when you're looking at spatial temporal data or if you have uh, uh, an, as the, as an area covered uh, within a specific time or multiple um, timeline. Then we have uh, number five, we're almost halfway. 
say you have an elevation model such as this LiDAR derived DTM from Taal Volcano from the Phil LiDAR program and UPTTAGP as you'd like to and you'd like to ex extract cross sections uh, there are a number of options available my personal preference though would be the profile tool plugin a key feature is you can derive profiles from multiple layers here I have six DTM tiles with profiles shown in different colors. Lastly, you can export your profile as PNG, SVG, and even DXF. Now, say I have sample points with regular spacing of 100 meters, and I'd like to derive uh, the slope data from the earlier DTM for each of these points. The tool I would use would be the point sampling tool. We need to specify the layer containing the sampling point, the source layer, and the fields you'd like to extract. For the output format, we have the option to have it as GeoPackage, CSV, or Shapefile. We go to number seven. For example, you have data um, of a line, but it's in bearing and distance, such as the one above. This is typical of technical descriptions on land titles in the Philippines. A plugin called Azimuth and Distance comes handy. Once activated, you may input your data on the form. However, it's important to change the angle type to bearing instead of azimuth. Another useful feature is the capability to import and export your data. This would be great, especially if you have several lines to plot. Now we go to a plugin to visualize spatiotemporal data. Here we have earthquake data from 1911 to June 2020 downloaded from USGS. And I made this animation using a plugin called Time Manager. Uh, and in the end, I used an online service to convert the frames to an animated GIF. It provides an option to previewing the animation prior to export, and this is quite helpful, especially if you're pressed for time and you don't want to re-export it several times. I'd say it worked well in this example. We're on number nine, and this plugin is used to quickly create a basic web map. It's called QGIS to, to, QGIS to Web. Sorry, It offers uh, options to export it either uh, as open layers, leaflet, and in its latest version through Mapbox. The plugin is light and quite powerful. You can add functionalities such as measure, tools, geolocation, layer search, address search, and many more. There's even an option to cluster your data points, such as the one on the right. So yes, a web map without touching any programming can be done. The final plugin that we'll explore today enables you to view your data sets in 3D by building a web app using QGIS to 3Js. Both raster, such as DMs and vector data, can be used. And we can even export it to a format suitable for 3D printing. Here's the Taal dataset on a map canvas. Here's the plugin interface. And here's the web app running on a standard browser. You can run it locally, or you can, if you want, you can publish it on the web. There you have it, we've covered 10 QGIS plugins in just 10 minutes and I hope you found this interesting and encourage you somehow to explore QGIS and its many more plugins. I'm sure you'll have your own list of favorites. Thank you for your time and uh, congratulations to the Pistana Mapa for a very successful event.